Nintendo Entertainment System is home to several badass ninjas. Ryu Hayabusa, Kage, and even Ninja Kid's Kyo. Okay, not so much Ninja Kid, but the others are pretty sweet. But the question remains, which NES Ninja is the most radical of them all? Following the success of 1984's Kung Fu Master, Irem wasted little time in releasing yet another martial arts themed game, this time taking place in feudal Japan. Kid Nikki Radical Ninja was released for arcades in late 1986, with the US version localized by Data East. Not long after, in 1987, a home version was released for the NES, also published by Data East. Training in his dojo, Kid Nicky is interrupted by a homing pigeon struck down by an arrow with a note attached from none other than Princess Margo, pleading for rescue from the loathsome clutches of the evil stone wizard. With the butchered battle cry of bad English, Kid Nicky busts through the wall of the dojo and sets off on his quest. Kid Nicky is your basic 80s platformer, where you navigate through stages moving from left to right, all of the while avoiding numerous enemies, traps, and pitfalls. Equipped with a spinning sword, Nikki fends off against hordes of evil ninjas from close range. Now don't be fooled by the cuteness of these adorable baddies. One hit and you're dead. Each of the eight stages begins with the title card displaying which end boss you'll face off against. Just like in Kung Fu Master, each of Kid Nikki's stages offers an end level opponent, which at the time was still a relatively fresh concept. Each end boss is unique unto each other, and not just simple palette swaps. Take for instance the first boss, Death Breath. He spews a noxious cloud from his cesspool of a mouth, and as a kid, I always found this hilarious. The game's sense of humor is one of Kid Nicky's more endearing traits, and accompanied with its cartoony, anime-like aesthetic, it's the type of adventure that attracts more kids to it than a stranger with a sack full of candy singing a siren song from the front seat of a rainbow-colored van. Another Irem staple, at the time anyway, was the use of vocal sound effects similar to the ones used for the bosses in Kung Fu Master. The grunts from Death Breath as he absorbs a blow, or when he emits a mouthful of foul rancid breath in your face, is pretty damn cool for an 87 title, and not something you saw often in older NES games. While these sound effects are pretty nifty, the music is unfortunately lackluster. Kid Nicky only offers a handful of tracks with the main theme playing throughout the majority of the game, save for boss fights, cave areas, and bonus rounds. While the main theme is pretty damn catchy, it would have been nice to hear a few other songs within the game. For the most part, Kid Nicky is pretty simple to get the hang of. While the bulk of the game has you jumping over obstacles and fighting goons, there are the occasional sections of stages that allow Nicky to climb, such as the trees in Stage 2. This actually leads to a hidden bonus stage, which surprisingly, Kid Nicky has several hidden throughout the game. Now in 87, hidden bonus stages like this were pretty cool, and like the boss voices, were still somewhat of an anomaly in comparison with Kid Nicky's platforming peers. The bonus stages yield useful items, otherwise not commonly found within the regular levels, such as a protective shield which takes out any enemy that wanders within its field, a white gi which allows Nikki to absorb an extra hit of damage, and of course, invaluable one-ups. I've always found these bonus levels cleverly hidden and a ton of fun to locate. And there's even shortcuts too. Kid Nikki starts off manageable enough before really taking off the reins after stage 4. Like I mentioned before, it's one-hit deaths, but thankfully the game is extremely generous with checkpoints. You can also take advantage of unlimited continues, although continuing will restart you from the beginning of the level. I can live with that. The biggest obstacles, which come later in the game, are learning the patterns of certain enemies and figuring out the tricks and weaknesses to each boss. Kid Nicky is a pretty fun game, and one which is easy to get into. With a gradual learning curve, Kid Nicky is simple to figure out from the get-go. The controls are responsive, and while they may not be as tight as, say, Mega Man, there's still no excuse for failure. The game's difficulty gradually increases as you go, which should be the case anyway, and the fun, cute anime-like graphics set in feudal Japan makes for a hell of a fun time. And great news! Kid Nicky is still a pretty inexpensive game. It's not available on the virtual console, but for the price that the card is going for these days, makes this one a no-brainer. 
If you want a quick and simple game to sit down to and play for just minutes at a time, then definitely add Kid Nicky to your collection.